Association. What's the, what's, the, what's the difference with us following Christ and you guys following Christ? It is, it was necessary during the time of Christ, the Son of Mary, for people to follow Christ. They would have no other way to receive salvation and go to heaven. Yeah. It was mandatory, obligatory, incumbent upon people to follow the prophet and the messenger at the time. So when Jesus Christ came as a prophet and a messenger to Bani Israel, the Jewish people who followed the Noahide laws or followed the Moses, the, his, 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 his Ten Commandments or the Torah or the Tanakh, whatever, if they rejected Christ, they would not have salvation. Because salvation depends on two things. One is you worship none but God, and secondly, you worship God in the way God wants you to worship Him through His prophets and messengers. So when a prophet and a messenger comes, you have to follow that prophet and the messenger. So when Christ came, he was the way to God, only way to God, no problem. But as you rightly said, he wasn't God. So those people who have taken him as God, they have been gone into misguidance. They had been misled and they have been deceived by whatever way they have so been we deceived. Forget Christ and us no. no, we say God tells us a believer in God believes in the prophets that he has sent and it, they make no distinction between them. This is also an article of faith to become a believer in God. As Muslims, out of the six articles of faith, one of the articles of faith is to believe in the prophets and messengers he has sent. We believe that God sent them and we do not reject them or deny them. By rejecting a prophet of God, it's like rejecting all prophets of God. Okay? So if you are going to be a true Muslim, a submitter to God, you have to follow, not follow, believe that he sent all the prophets and messengers. Now, what does it mean believe? Does it mean to follow what supposedly they have brought? Because Jesus didn't write the New Testament or the Gospels. He went preaching about what God told him to preach. People came and they start drafting and writing books like what Luke says, for example. As far as many people are writing, it seemed good to me what also. Did, what did Luke say that was? No, 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 I want to... Writing. Luke says many people are writing. Have I made sense though? You're making sense, but good. So now you say what you have to say. No, <laughs> go ahead. Your no, turn. But, but I want to know what what these these Luke's, Luke and, and and Mark, Matthew, Luke and John, all of these message, all of these witnesses, they were witness to Christ. They witness. They're they weren't witnesses. In fact, even Luke says. That's why I was quoting the very very first passage in Luke. In my paraphrase, as, as far as I, you know, he has seen, what he does, he says, it seems good to me also to write an account, an orderly account to his you know, excellent Theophilus, so that people can know because being the very beginning, he started seeing things and witnessing things and so on. So he's getting information from sources, which he considers to be primary and secondary himself. So he's collating information. My point was this, simple. He's writing because other people are writing about it. So now we establish people are writing about Christ, lots of people. And we know that historically so, there were more than four Gospels like we have in the, uh, the Bible, New Testament. You know that, right? To give some examples, Gospel of Ebionites, mm. Gospel of Nazarene, Gospel of Egyptians, Gospel of Judas, Gospel of Mary, Gospel of St. Thomas, and if the list goes on. There are about 49 Gospels. Part of it is extant, available still in bits and pieces. People were writing. But think about this though. If the four Gospels are considered to be canonical, authoritative, what about the other ones? They are forgeries in the name of God. So people were writing scripture in the name of God, which are clearly forgeries. So, that's why, that's why my friend, what's your name? So, so, what's your name? Prince. Prince, my name is Mansour. That's why Allah says in the Quran, woe to those who write the book with their own hands and say, this is from God. Woe to this for what they write and what they earn thereby. Because God reminds us there are people who write things and say, oh, this is from God. And God says, no, woe to them because learn it on them. So we need to, as human beings, fulfill a purpose of worshiping God by doing what? Recognizing the final messenger. So, 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 so we say and accepting Bible, his message to them. The scriptures are the word of God. Right? But you know that people wrote, you don't even know who wrote them. But you believe in the hadiths and stuff like that? Our hadiths 
even the weakest hadith are better than the narratives of the gospel. Let me illustrate what I mean in terms of its transmission history. I'm not talking about the eloquence of certain writings or what it contains, but in terms of preservation history and transmission history, our weakest hadiths are recognized to be weak by looking at who narrated them, which person narrated them and what were their deficiencies or weaknesses. And based on that, we say, you cannot really consider this particular statement that he's saying is attributable to the Prophet 100%. There are some elements of doubt. That's why it's weak. There are hadiths which we can say these are fabricated and forged and we will say totally rejectable and rejected. The Bible, on the other hand, is worse than our weakest hadith. Why? Because I'll tell you why. When you have a writing attributed to God, firstly, we need to know, okay, fine. This person says, Jesus said so, okay? The person who said that, how is he in terms of his character? Is he a good person, a righteous person, a person who doesn't lie, doesn't cheat, doesn't deceive? Is he man or woman of integrity? Number one. Secondly, is that person? No, 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 no. It's important to understand. No, 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 my friend. It's just understanding the text. A writing that is now claiming to be scripture, someone who writes it, we need to know the person who's writing it. Is it written by a person who is of integrity? And the person who writes, did he or she write it recollecting the information with good memory? Imagine someone writing something who is a liar and he lies about it. We would say that account we can't trust it because he's a liar. He will lie about it. Yeah? Do, you, do you follow the principle? No, no, I'm secondly, not. secondly, someone witnessed an event at the time of Christ and they forgot mostly because they have a bad memory. No, 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 in, 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 in principle, right? Imagine a, a writer, he has bad memory and he writes things from his bad memory. Would he be writing exactly what the event happened? No, there is a possibility of errors and mistakes happening in that what writing. What does it mean when it says Christ is the word of God? No, 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 no. I'm not going into the details. Okay, no. I'm no, simply saying the principles. This is an external approach of looking at any piece of writing and see the credibility and the authorship. If, for example, we don't know who the author is, now it could be someone who is so cunning and so deceptive that he wants to make you believe in the text that he writes, but he's actually a liar. So, so, is when, it so when, 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 when Allah says that, that, they, that the disbelievers, hmm. that we, they would be disbelievers, how did he know that they would be disbelievers? I don't understand your question. Can, can, can we all be believers to Allah? They, where would the disbelievers God come from? told us if, if he so willed, he could yes. have made everyone to believe. Yes. But he doesn't force people to believe. He knows because of the freedom of choice that he has given people, some people would not believe in God because they don't want to believe in God. Yeah? People would not want to believe in God just because some people don't want to by their own volition. Do you understand the point? So God is not going to force people to believe in God. And because of his foreknowledge, he knows that they will be dis disbelievers. He knows where they're going to end up. And that's why he created hell and heaven, of course, even before he created human beings. Because he knew that because of people's choice that he has given, some people will be so stubborn and so arrogant, and they will reject the truth and their consequences will be going into hellfire through God's justice. So what I, the only point, my friend, um, Prince, I'm, I'm, I'm saying is this. The Bible has a lot of books in its collection, the New Testament and the Old Testament. What's important for us is to look at the writing that we have. Who has written them? What was their motives? What was their character? What was their personality? What was their memory? If we cannot be sure about it, then there is always a risk of deception, trickery, mistakes, misinformation coming from these books. And I often give examples from the Gospels. The first Gospel of the Gospel of Matthew, right? If we were to demonstrate to you, Prince, Matthew deliberately distorts history, rewrites history in his book, invents prophecies, makes up things, then you would question the motive. Sure, 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 sure. You're not proving no. it. No, Prince, 
First, I'm establishing a principle. Yeah. If we were to establish that, then you would agree by natural conclusion that the writing for that individual we should take with a pinch of salt because he seems to be manipulator. He seems to be someone who has a motive to distort the truth. In principle, we agree. Any book, if we were to establish that. Now, here comes my evidence for my suggestions. In the very beginning of his gospel, he cites certain names and says, these are the genealogies of people within the genealogy of Jesus, right? From Abraham to David, from David to the exalted the Babylon, and all the way to Jesus. Yep, son of, supposedly son of Joseph through Luke or through, through Nathan or Heli, whatever, right? He gives a genealogy. But that's not my point. My point is, he says something very important. He says, these are all the generations. From Abraham to David, from these three, lots of generations, three sequences. And he says what? 14, 14 and 14. 42. Three 14s are 42 generations. He says, these are... Not some of the generations. If you can open up and, and the Bible and check right now. He says these are all the generations. Guess what? If you go back in the Old Testament to look at the genealogies of these people, their fathers and the children and their grandchildren, he has missed a lot of them. Now, so number one, they're not 14, 14 and 14. Then the question is, why is he doing that? He is clearly distorting history. He's saying 14, 14 when it's not. Then it comes the actual reasons why you need to be very suspicious. The names he omits are very significant. He omits in verse 10 or 11. He says, Josiah begat Jeconiah and his brothers. We know from 1 Chronicles, chapter 3, verse 16, 14, 15, 16 onwards, that Josiah did not beget or produce children Jeconiah and the brothers. Jeconiah was a grandchild of Josiah's. The person that he's missed is Jehoiakim, who is the father of Jeconiah. He has omitted Jehoiakim. You might think it's not significant, but when we go to Jeremiah 36.30 or 30.36, I don't remember the exact reference. It's one of these two. I would have to, I would have wait, to wait. look into it. You can that. look into it. You, you can, can look into it. No, no, you can look into it and then investigate further. God says in that narration, he cursed yes. Je Jehoiakim. He says, you will have none to sit on the throne of David, you and your progeny and your children. What does Matthew want to do in his genealogy? He says, Jesus, the son of David. He wants to make Jesus the son of David through a genealogy. Now, if you have someone within this genealogy who God says, if someone comes through you, you cannot have and claim the throne of David. So it will be shooting on your own foot. So he takes that name away, Jehovah Kim, thinking that people in later times would not even understand and realize that and uncover what he has done. So we can see the motive. He took the name Jehovah Kim away because God cursed Jehovah Kim, but through his descendants, no one can be the son of David and claim the throne of David. And Matthew's whole modus operandi, his motive is to make Jesus the son of David. So we can see one example in so which... Think all the scriptures is, is no, 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 no. We can see one example. You can't throw the whole baby out with the bathwater, right? At least from that example, you realize Matthew cannot be trusted because he distorts history for a theological motive. Number one example. You can give another example. I'll give you two or three and then we'll finish it. Second example. He says, and as was spoken by the prophets, he shall, call, he shall be called a Nazarene. Jesus will be called a Nazarene. So he gives a prophecy spoken by the prophets of the past. You can go and read all the books that you have in the Old Testament. For the last 2000 years, Christian scholarship and the laity failed to find a single scripture in which there was a prophecy in which it said, he shall be called a Nazarene. They tried, wait, 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 wait. He shall be called a Nazarene. No one called him a Nazarene. He was born in Nazareth. No, that's, look, look, that's look, look, different. Look. The prophecy that's is, that's the prophecy that's is, that's prophecies in the Old Testament, they're not very vague, like, oh, um, he will be a nice person. It's not like that. It needs to be specific enough to be uh, applicable to an individual. Imagine now a prophecy of Jesus Christ is, he shall be a nice person. Weren't there any other nice person among this time? There were. So how, who fits the prophecy? 
Prophecies need to be distinct, specific, precise. Even though there's some kind of... Wait, 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 wait. We're not talking about prophecies. We're talking about the nature, Prince, the nature of prophecies. Even though there might be some ambiguity, some kind of... Because otherwise everyone will just look for these prophecies and and so on. There's an aura very, around it. You're very knowledgeable. You're but very I want, knowledgeable I want, I want, I want to say and this. That is why, that is why you, you, you continuously, you, you continuously speak because, because whatever you, you understand about the scriptures, you already had it, have it in your head. Because you say, you, you no, say this is an informed decision, so, not so, a blind faith. My, my, Quran, my reasoning is informed. But the Quran is the word of Allah. The Quran is the, is the word, direct, is direct word, word of word Allah. Allah. So yes. when you represent the Quran, you're representing the word of Allah. Yes. Just like Christ did. No, 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 no. You're, okay, you're, you're shifting the we'll discussion. We will, we will we'll talk about that later. But we'll, well, you're talking about No, no. What, no, what I'm talking about is, you as a Christian prince, your faith doesn't only come from tradition. It doesn't come from your experience. Your faith is actually rooted in the scripture. You can't... Leave the scripture and says, I believe in Christ. Because where is this faith based on? The, 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 the based on prophecy. And the where is the prophecy Isaiah from? Like yeah, yeah. 53. Scripture. Do you agree? Scripture. No, no, we're not going to have to go into specifics. Yeah. There is scripture which your faith is rooted on. Okay, yeah. that's the foundation. Yeah. I am saying, as a, a, as a human being with rational faculties, God has given you. He's given rational faculties to people. Do you believe that? Do you believe that in like in Mecca, when they write news, when they write the news in Mecca, they're writing it from Mecca. So, so if I'm gonna write a, a paper, like for example the Sun newspaper, mm. they're writing it from London, right? So whatever they experience in the world, they wrote, they write it down. Is the Israelites wherever they were, they were writing down their own story. Fine. So when I nation writes against the I I do not have a problem with Israelite nation writing when, their history. When when, when when the, the scripture speaks of, of Israel, the only time another nation is mentioned is when they come up against the children of Israel. So the prophet... Prince, I have no issues with people writing their own history yeah, yeah. and their theology and so on. What, the only point I am emphasizing is when we look at the claims of certain scripture which says this is divinely well, if sanctioned. Christ didn't exist. If Christ didn't exist, they couldn't have wrote about it. Sure, sure, sure. So he that, must have existed. I'm not arguing for absence of Christ in the scripture. Have, no, you know, but we're talking about, like, I'm defending, I'm defending Christ. You're defending No, I'm Christ. saying any so writing, I'm, any writing that you look at, you need to assess the strength of his authenticity. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but the, but even even when Matthew was talking about Christ's genealogy, Christ was already on earth. Why is he in, distorting history? You said he distorted. I am saying even correct. If someone, even if even if someone skip the nephew and go straight to the to the to the to the uncle or whatever, it doesn't mean that the uncle never exists. It doesn't mean that the nephew. No, the uncle never existed exists. because. We have the Old Testament writing still. Yeah. If we didn't have all of these things, yeah, you'd yeah. think that it's only 14 yeah. generations, right? You would be tricked. No, but from from where the 14 generations are from Abraham. There are four, three lots of 14 generations. Yeah. From Abraham to David, yeah. David to exiled, to Babylon, and from yeah. there to Christ. Yeah. So those but what I'm saying, we know there are more than 14 because we still have the Chronicles. If we didn't have them, you would have thought as a Christian. You have, you, the, the, the Chronicles are in the scripture. So you believe in the Old Testament. If the Old Testament new. was destroyed for some reason no, and you had no manuscripts, integrity of Matthew. Yeah? and you only had Matthew, you would have thought there are only 14 generations yeah. from these three sequences 14, 14, and 14. Yeah. Total 42 generations. That's what you have thought. No, it's 14, 14, and 14. And 14. That's 42. But, that's, but then. But then it doesn't have to be exactly accurate, right? If, Why not? Because if, say for example, we 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 were in captivity, right? We had to we, we write what we can remember, what we can physically. Would you write remember. something which is wrong? I don't think he's wrong. He might just skip. You said he skipped. Uh, he said didn't. He skip, uh, he skip, uh, he skip. The example uh, I gave, Prince. Uh, this is one point I want to make. I no, gave example. No, no, I gave example. I gave examples where you That's cannot. No, no. You cannot just simply argue that okay, he made an honest mistake. This that is a deliberate omission. Deliberate omission. Yeah. He omit knows why Jehoiakim needs to be omitted. He's cursed. Remember, he was right. looking back at records as well. Mm. Now, for him to go back 14 generations, he wasn't alive then. No, no. So he must have been going Prince, back. Prince, Prince, I want to make some this point. He didn't take the name of Josiah away. No, what? but he took Jeho Jehoiakim. And, and why Jehoiakim, why? His grandson is, is... No, no, but why did he take Jehoiakim away? Yeah. 
because he probably he probably didn't know about it. No. He knew. He knew about it. Is he? How, is he so what? So if he knew about it, what what would it be that he he could have put it in? Why didn't he? What, that's the reason How do that you we're know saying. About it? No, you know what? I could I give, might know you, hello, and I might know no, your part, but, but, but I might not know your you part. Might, you might think, look, this is where it gets more interesting. You might think this is one accidental thing that he's no, done. There's loads. If we give a cumulative case within the Gospel of Matthew, one after the other, in which it distorts invent prophecies, distorts prophecies, then you will come to a conclusion saying. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, sure. so, so the, the Ishmaelites yeah. came from Abraham. Of course. Yeah. How much generation to Muhammad? Well, well. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Let me tell you what. Why I say that? Because in the app, I'm answering. From, from I am answering. He's answering. He's answering. He's answering. I'm answering. If we do not have an authentic narration from our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, all the way going back to. Ismail Ibrahim in the genealogy that we cannot say this is the genealogy. But the, the Quran comes, the Quran Wait, comes from Allah. Listen, so listen, Allah listen. should know. The Quran is not a book of genealogies. The Quran is independent of genealogies and it gives you guidance. So it might give you stories of Prophet Joseph in a whole chapter called Yusuf, Surah Yusuf. Right? Whole chapter called Yusuf. And it highlights his important events in his How life. Know? Wait, wait. How are you going to know where, where, where Muhammad comes from if there's no genealogy? He could have been anyone. He could have been even you. Look, when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, came to the people and said, I'm a prophet of God. Listen, 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 listen. He says, I'm a prophet of you God. Claim Abraham oh, please listen. I've been listening when, to you when, the when he claimed, when the prophet said, Abraham I'm, a, I'm answering. Yeah. When the prophet وسلم, came and said, I'm a prophet of God. Yeah. What's people going to say, oh, are you an Israelite? Yeah. Or are you an Israelite? Yeah. He must come from, a, he, he must come from somewhere for you to represent something. So if he's going to be, he's the Abraham, assumption, the, assum the assumption that you're making is you can only be a prophet of God if you come from an Israelite no, or Ishmaelite. That. Then it's irrelevant. That. That. But Muhammad, Coming Muhammad, from Israelites Muhammad or Ishmaelites came, is irrelevant. Muhammad came as an Abrahamic faith. No, he came with the faith, not from Abraham only representing the faith that God sent to all prophets. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, yes, he know. came to represent Islam, which is the only faith God sent to all of the prophets. And he came to tell you also to follow the Millah the of Abraham, right? You follow the Torah. No. We don't follow the so Torah. Muhammad said he took the Torah. Uh, no, we don't take the Torah, follow the Torah. We believe in the scriptures God sent. Yes. But we don't say we have to follow the corrupted scripture that are bound now in our hands. God doesn't want us to follow what he gave to Noah. Upon him be peace. But, but the, the Quran says that Allah chose the Israelites above all the people on earth. At that point, at that God point, said he, for example, made a particular woman. No, it's, 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 I, I'm, I'm giving you no, examples of. You see, oh you, you want to turn this conversation. You don't. You don't to, understand. I don't understand. About Mary. I, about Mary. What does God say in the Quran about Mary? Was Mary an Israelite? Was Mary an Israelite? Yes. From Joseph. From exactly. Children so of Israel. That means, so that means. What does Quran say about how her? Did, how did the Quran know that Mary would have, is an Israelite? If they didn't because know it comes from God, who is all knowledgeable. But then it's true genealogy. No. How can, how okay. can you know that Mary is an Israelite and Christ is an Israelite? Does God know Mary an Israelite or not? Does God know Mary an Israelite? Does God know that Mary... No, no. I'm asking you a question. Simple question. Yeah, God Does knows. God know Mary an Israelite or not? Ask the reader. No, wait, wait, wait. If God said, I am God and I have no son, would you disagree with God? No. Good. I can't because, with God. because, but, but because, the, but the whatever God, exactly wait, from the Prince, beginning, from David, whatever God Salaman, said, whatever God said, you accept it once you but know this God is what God, God said. Is different from the God of the Bible. God of the Bible is because the Bible has corruption within it. That's why it's different. No, there's no corruption. Really? There's Let me give no an corruption. example. Let me give an example of corruption. Do you know rainbows in the sky for what reason? Rainbow. Yeah. According to the Old Testament, the Scripture. I don't know, you tell me. Okay, so let me give you a brief background. There was a destruction by flood of the whole community of human beings according to 
the Old Testament. No, Hamsha and Japheth. God destroyed everyone and only saved the people who were in the boat. You believe that? This is irrelevant to my point. But you can't speak on something if you, oh, please, don't, if you please, don't believe please, it. Please, it's irrelevant. I am trying to give you the reason why there's a rainbow in the sky. So my belief is irrelevant. Do you believe that the flood? Prince, Prince, Prince. The Quran talks about flood. The Quran talks about Noah. Doing, so I believe in what the Quran said. No. And I see Muslims they always talk. Do you know? Do you know why? Do you know why I'm not answering it? Do you know why? I'll tell you now. Because the point I'm making irrelevant to my belief. I do believe Noah existed. I do believe there was a flood. Yeah. But that's not the point I'm making. Because it's going to take away from the point I'm making by sidetracking. So what the point I'm making is this. Flood, according to the Bible, according to the Old Testament, and God made a covenant with Noah. He says, from now on, I am not going to destroy mankind wholesale again. And as a sign, a token of my covenant, I am going to place a bow, a rainbow in the cloud. And this is where it gets interesting. When I'm about to destroy mankind again, and I look at the clouds and I see the rainbow, it will remind me of the covenant. Remind me of us as human. Hmm? Us, our God. Remind him. God. Yes. So, what, so God needs. So Reminding saying, by a rainbow. So you're saying that God is no, so no. Wait, 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 wait. Let's understand something. This so if text. God needs remain, if God plays something and then when he saw it, he remembers yes. his covenant. Do you think this is a correct concept of God in which it deals with the appropriate concept of God as he is in his reality? I think that I think that the Bible expands more about the, 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 the flood than, than in the in the Quran. Okay. Does God forget? I don't think he does. Good. Neither do I. Does God need reminding then if he doesn't forget? Exactly. So when you have a scripture in which it says God will be reminded by a rainbow, then he... I'll show you. Do you have a Bible? It does. It's very important to read the scripture. Open up Genesis. Yeah. Yeah. I'll show you. I'll show you. Okay. You know, you obviously, Hang on. you obviously, you guys obviously organize. Genesis 9, chapter 9. Genesis. Verse 13 to 16. Uh, you read it from yours. Genesis 9, 13. 13 to 16 and words. Okay, start from 13. So, so you read. Go ahead. So, and God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for a perpetual generation. I do set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Continue. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant. Who will remember? Is, and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature sure. of all flesh. Yeah. Who will and remember the, the covenant? God. God. Does God need demanding? And the water shall no more become yeah, that's, a flood. That's, if the point is made already. Does God need reminding by a rainbow? No. Exactly. So, so you're saying that God is. No, I am saying. A book which claims to be scripture and just depicting and describing God inadequately. So there's no point us wait, 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 wait. No, what you're wait. saying is. Can I make my point? Then you, you, no, you have a certain. Do you understand my point? I understand though? your point. Good so, good. so you're saying no, as we are today, presently on earth. You're saying that the scripture, the old complete Bible, should be shown away. I'm saying something different. No. Yes, or no. I'm just telling you, I'm saying something different. I am saying. Because of the corruption that has occurred within the biblical scriptures, Islamic standpoint is slightly different on this matter. Islam says the Quran came as a muhayminan, as a quality control, as a guardian in which it testifies to the truthfulness. So what and did the Quran say about I have not rainbow? finished my statement. But we are on the rainbow. You got you're, you're I, preaching. I, I'm not preaching. What did the Quran I'm, I'm say making, about the rainbow? I'm, I'm telling the standpoint. Yeah. What did the Quran say about the rainbow? The Quran doesn't talk about the rainbow. So, so if the scriptures talk about the rainbow, which is a different God. So if our God needs rem reminding of His promise, 
what did the Quran say about that promise? I'm, because I'm, because I'm, remember, I'm the Quran, just telling you, Prince, the Quran describes God and reminds the Jewish Christians or the people who follow this book that they have introduced concepts of God which are not from him, yeah, about him, right? One of them, God says that he created the earth and the heavens in six days and no fatigue touched him. He doesn't sleep, he doesn't feel slumber. What does the Bible say about God creating the heavens and the earth? He created the heavens and the earth in six days. And on the seventh day, God rested and got refreshed. In contradiction to this kind of system of theology, Quran says, no, God created the heavens and the earth and no fatigue touched him. So he didn't need a rest. He doesn't get tired. So he corrects the incorrect belief about God from the scripture. That's the point we're making. Thank you. And, and you're, a very, you're a very eloquent speaker and, so you're, you. and, you're, and you're religion. And um, I give you that because I always watch you and I, I see that you, you know your stuff. But, but we, we stand firm. Before, you, if there was no Quran, we would still have the scriptures. Yeah, you'd have but, to follow Christ's message then. That's, yes. that's, that was the only way. At the time of Moses, you would have to follow Moses yes. and yes. no other way. But so when, when God, when Muhammad Islam came, it is our role and responsibility and our purpose is to recognize him and follow him. That's the difference that we are having. Okay. All the best. Okay. All the Take best. care. Thank you very Take much. Take care. Thank Pleasure you. speaking to you. Thank you.